In our previous video, we looked at the colligative property of vapor pressure. And so now we want to see how vapor pressure and it being decreased at every temperature for a solution relative to a pure solvent, how that affects maybe boiling point and how that relates to also freezing point uh, for a solution. And so if we go back to how we define boiling point, remember this is the temperature where the vapor pressure of what's going to be boiling is equal to the atmospheric pressure. And we typically talk about this with respect to the normal boiling point, right? And so that's where atmospheric pressure is uh, one atmosphere. And so if we go back to, well, if our vapor pressure is lower for a solution, how does that affect our boiling point? So we're going to look at this by looking at a phase diagram. So this is, if we, we talked about this line right here, the phase separation between a liquid and a gas represents our vapor pressure because it's the place where it would boil when that pressure, the vapor pressure, equals that specific atmospheric pressure. And so if each of these vapor pressures are decreased at a specific temperature, we could see we would drop this down a little bit for each of these temperatures and we could redraw in our new vapor pressure curve. Okay, because every single one of our vapor pressures is lower for a solution relative to uh, our pure solvent. And so now we see uh, what happens here is that each of our vapor pressures are lower. Let's look at how that would affect our boiling point. Well, we're going to go ahead and trace over and look at this would be our normal boiling point for the pure uh, solvent. And this would be the normal boiling point for our solution. So this would be the boiling point of our solvent. And this right here would be the boiling point of our solution. So we notice because our vapor pressure is lower every single temperature, we have to get to a higher temperature to allow that vapor pressure to equal our atmospheric pressure, which means our, our boiling point is going to be at a higher temperature than uh, for a solution relative to the pure solvent. We also notice another important thing here is that because our vapor pressures are lower, our triple point has lowered down. Well, what we're going to see is that our freezing point or the separation between a solid and a liquid, the slope of that line remains the same, but it's going to be shifted over a little bit because our triple point has been uh, dropped over and down. So our triple point is at a lower pressure, a lower temperature for a solution relative to the pure solvent, uh, and our boiling point is higher. Well, now if we trace in and look at the freezing point for that pure solvent relative to the freezing point of our solution, what we notice is that our freezing point of our solution is lower. And we can, let's think conceptually why that's the case. Something is going to freeze, go from a liquid to a solid, because you're cooling it down. And as you cool it down, you get to some place where the attractions between this liquid molecule and this liquid molecule are strong enough to allow them to stick together and create a rigid crystalline structure, which is our solid structure. Well, if you throw in a bunch of solute particles between those, right? So I have this, sol this liquid particle and this liquid particle. They want to come together and, get, and have strong enough attraction to get to a solid rigid structure. If you throw in some solute particles between those, it's going to minimize those attractions. As it decreases the strength of those attractions, that means that we're going to have to get to a lower temperature before they can have strong enough attractions to each other. They're not moving around as much to form that rigid, solid crystalline structure. And so because of this, the freezing point of our solution is going to be lower than the normal freezing point for the pure solvent. And then because of the, the vapor pressure depression, the boiling point of our solution is going to be higher than the normal boiling point of our pure solvent. And again, kind of how we looked at uh, vapor pressure and how it's depressed, we can uh, mathematically represent this and say the change in our freezing point, okay, so that's ch delta freezing point, is equal to a constant that relates to our freezing point times the molality of our solution and then times what we call the Van Hoff factor, okay? Uh, the Van Hoff factor tells us how many solute particles we get for every mole of solvent that we dissolve. Solute, excuse me. So if I dissolve a molecular compound like sucrose, if I dissolve one mole of it, I get one mole of solute particles. 
Whereas if I dissolve one mole of sodium chloride, as I dissolve the sodium chloride, it breaks up into two pieces. And so every mole of solute sodium chloride dissolved, I get a chloride ion and a sodium ion. I get two moles of solute particles. And so we'd say our Van Hoff factor there would be two. And so we can relate it to the number of pieces that it breaks up into as it's dissolved, okay? Here we have molality. Molality is moles of solute per kilogram of solvent. So we notice that this measurement of, of a um, concentration is very different from other concentrations that we use. We typically talk about amount of solute per amount of solution. This we're just looking at the ratio between solute to solvent. So notice this is not the mass of our solution. It's the mass of our solvent. Okay, And then our Kf is our freezing point depression constant and we'll see that this is specific to each compound that is our solvent. Okay, so water will have a specific freezing point depression constant. Methanol will have a specific freezing point depression constant. And so this has to do with the specific solvent that we're looking at, right? Because our colligative properties only deal with the change in freezing point or boiling point or vapor pressure of our solvent. Right? The identity of our solute particles don't matter. That's why we call them colligative properties. Okay? And so we see the change that occurs here is equal to this. Okay? Notice that this is equal to the absolute value of our freezing point of our solution minus the freezing point of our pure solvent. Right? This, will, this change in freezing point is always going to be lower. We will always end up at a lower freezing point for our solution than we will for our solvent. Now, if we want to correlate this to our boiling point change, we could say the change in our boiling point is equal to the same expression. The boiling point uh, uh, depression constant times the molality of our solution times the Van Hoff factor. Okay, and so we see we have two different constants because my boiling point is going to be affected differently than the freezing point is. And so these are going to be different constants, but with respect to, again, the solvent. So in a further video, we're going to look at working through an example of calculating how much my freezing point has changed, how much my boiling point has changed, how much of my vapor pressure has changed, and then we're also going to look at osmotic pressure. So the next video we're going to look at is a colligative property looking at osmotic pressure and where that comes from and how we actually calculate it.